I am a young earth creationist. That means I think the earth is on the order of thousands of years old. Now most scientists believe the earth is on the order of billions of years old. That's a big difference and there are a lot of ways we can argue why the earth is thousands of years old and not billions of years old. But when people learn I am a young earth creationist, one of the questions they often ask is, if the earth is only thousands of years old, how is it that we're seeing light from very distant stars. After all, we can give good estimates for how far away these stars are, and some of them are hundreds of millions, if not billions, of light years away. And a light year is the distance light travels on Earth in a full year. Uh, and so if a star is hundreds of millions of light years away, it only makes sense that the light took hundreds of millions of years to travel here. And since we're actually seeing the star, that must have mean the Earth and the universe have been sitting around for at least hundreds of millions of years. Now that's an argument that sounds pretty reasonable, but it ignores basically all the physics we've learned since the early 1900s. Because one thing that we know for certain these days is time is not as well behaved in the universe as it is here on Earth. And in fact, time's not even very well behaved in our own solar system. Most people don't realize this, but every time you use a GPS device to navigate from one place to another, you're confirming the fact that time ticks differently depending on where you are in the solar system. So the global positioning system uses a bunch of satellites that are in orbit around the Earth. Believe it or not, time actually runs faster on those satellites than it does here on Earth because they're experiencing a lower gravitational field and gravity affects the passage of time. If we didn't take into account that time is running faster on those satellites than it is here on Earth, the global positioning system simply would not work. So we know for certain that time varies depending on gravitational fields. So suddenly when you say it took hundreds of millions of years for light to travel through the universe, a distance of hundreds of millions of light years, you're assuming that the gravitational fields between you and that star are roughly the same everywhere. Because remember, if that light is going through an area where there's almost no gravity, then time's going to be speeding up and ticking very quickly. And so the light can move much farther than it would here on Earth in the same time period, right? So in the end, in order to figure out what um, how light traveled from one star to, to Earth, we have to figure out all the gravitational fields in between. Now that's a little difficult to do, but we can make up some mathematical models to help us. Now if you believe in the Big Bang Theory, then it actually assumes that all these, at, uh, all these gravitational fields are the same between you and the star. So yeah, you can say that it takes hundreds of millions of years for light to travel, hundreds of millions of light years. But that's not the only theory out there, and in fact, it's probably not even the best one. Uh, a, a model I think that is much more reasonable comes from some young Earth creationists that assume the universe expa expanded as a sphere. Now when most people hear the Big Bang, that's what they think the Big Bang assumes. They think the Big Bang assumes, like any normal explosion, that the universe expanded spherically. But in fact, that's not what the Big Bang thinks. The Big Bang assumes that the universe expanded without any geometry at all. However, if we assume that the universe's expansion is like most explosions we see, which is a spherical expansion, then something really interesting happens. You can actually show that because of the changes in gravitational fields, the closer you are to the edge of the universe, the faster time travels. And the closer you are to the center of the universe, the slower time travels. So if we assume the universe is expanding spherically, and we additionally assume that the Earth is somewhere near the center of that expansion, then it turns out we can easily understand how light from very, very distant stars got to here in only a few thousand Earth years. That's because the Earth years pass so slowly compared to the years near the edge of the universe that light had plenty of time to get here. And the only difference between 
the big between uh, believing in the Big Bang and believing in this particular model, the main difference anyway, is the shape of the universe's expansion. To me, it makes much more sense to assume the universe is expanding spherically, because that's what generally happens in an explosion. So if that's the case, and the Earth is near the center of that expansion, light has had plenty of time to get to Earth, even from the most distant stars we can see.